Epcot Epcot is the theme park at the Walt Disney World Resort in Bay Lake, Florida. It is owned and operated by the Walt Disney Company through its Parks, Experiences and Consumer Products Division. Inspired by the unrealized concept developed by Walt Disney, the park opened on October 1, 1982 as Epcot Center, and was the second of four theme parks built at Walt Disney World, after the Magic Kingdom. Spanning, more than twice the size of the Magic Kingdom Park, Epcot is dedicated to the celebration of human achievement, namely technological innovation and international culture, and is often referred to as a permanent world's fair. Epcot was originally conceived by Walt Disney during the early development of Walt Disney World, as an experimental planned community that would serve as a center for American innovation and urban living. Known as Epcot, the idea included an urban city center, residential areas, and a series of mass transportation systems that would connect the community. After Disney's death in 1966, the Epcot concept was abandoned as the company had uncertainty about maintaining an operating city. In the 1970s, Wet Enterprises began developing a second theme park for the resort to supplement Magic Kingdom, as that park's popularity grew. The new park maintained the idea of showcasing modern innovation through avant-garde edutainment attractions, as well as the addition of a World Nations Exposition. The newly designed park, featuring two sections, Future World and World Showcase, opened as Epcot Center in 1982. In 2017, Epcot hosted about 12.2 million guests, ranking it as the fourth most visited theme park in North America and the seventh most visited theme park in the world. The park is represented by Spaceship Earth, a geodesic sphere that also serves as an attraction. The theme park opened on October 1, 1982. The dedication plaque near the entrance states the park's name, Epcot, is an acronym for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, a utopian city of the future planned by Walt Disney often interchanging city and community. In Walt Disney's words, Epcot will take its cue from the new ideas and new technologies that are now emerging from the creative centers of American industry. It will be a community of tomorrow that will never be completed but will always be introducing and testing, and demonstrating new materials and new systems. And Epcot will always be a showcase to the world of the ingenuity and imagination of American free enterprise. His original vision was for a model community which would have been home to 20,000 residents and a testbed for city planning as well as organization. It was to have been built in the shape of a circle with businesses and commercial areas at its center with community buildings, schools, and recreational complexes around it while residential neighborhoods would line the perimeter. This radial plan concept is strongly influenced by British planner Ebenezer Howard and his Garden Cities of Tomorrow. Transportation would have been provided by monorails and people movers, like that in Magic Kingdom's Tomorrowland. Automobile traffic would be kept underground, leaving pedestrians safe above ground. The original model of Epcot can still be seen by passengers riding the Tomorrowland Transit Authority attraction in the Magic Kingdom Park, when the people mover enters the show house for Stitch's Great Escape! Exclamation mark, comma, the remaining portion of the model is visible on the left, when facing forward, behind glass. Walt Disney was not able to obtain funding and permission to start work on his Florida property until he agreed to first build Magic Kingdom. He died nearly five years before Magic Kingdom opened. After Disney's death, Walt Disney Productions decided that it did not want to be in the business of running a city without Walt's guidance. The model community of Celebration, Florida has been mentioned as a realization of Disney's original vision, but Celebration is based on concepts of new urbanism which is radically different from Disney's modernist and futurist visions. However, the idea of Epcot was instrumental in prompting the state of Florida to create the Reedy Creek Improvement District, RCID, and the cities of Bay Lake and Reedy Creek, now Lake Buena Vista, a legislative mechanism allowing Disney to exercise governmental powers over Walt Disney World. Control over the resort is vested in the landowners of the district, and the promise of an actual city in the district would have meant that the powers of the resort would have been distributed among the landowners in Epcot because the idea of Epcot was never implemented. Disney remained almost the sole landowner in the district, allowing it to maintain control of the resort and the cities of Bay Lake and Lake Buena Vista. Disney further cemented this control by de annexing celebration from the resort. The original plans for the park showed indecision over the park's purpose. Some Imagineers wanted it to represent the cutting edge of technology, while others wanted it to showcase international cultures and customs. At one point, a model of the futuristic park was pushed together against a model of a World's Fair International theme, and the two were combined. 
The park was originally named Epcot Center to reflect the ideals and values of the city. It was constructed for an estimated $800 million to $1.4 billion and took three years to build. At the time the largest construction project on Earth. The parking lot serving the park is, including bus area, and can accommodate 11,211 vehicles, grass areas hold additional 500 plus vehicles. Before it opened on October 1, 1982, Walt Disney World Ambassador Jeannie Field introduced E. Carden Walker, Disney's chairman and CEO, who dedicated Epcot Center. Walker also presented a family with lifetime passes for the two Walt Disney World theme parks. His remarks were followed by Florida Governor Bob Graham and William Ellinghouse, president of AT&T. As part of the opening day ceremony, dancers and band members performed We've Just Begun to Dream. The Sherman Brothers wrote a song especially for the occasion entitled The World Showcase March. During the finale, Duffs and many sets of balloons were released. Performing groups representing countries from all over the world performed in World Showcase. Water was gathered from major rivers across the globe and emptied into the park's Fountain of Nations ceremonial containers to mark the opening. Located at the front of the park is a plaque bearing Walker's opening day dedication. In November 2016, it was announced at the Destination D fan event that Epcot would be receiving a major transformation that would help transition the park into being more Disney, timeless, relevant, family-friendly while keeping the original vision alive. No further details were mentioned. In July 2017, the Walt Disney Company announced that Epcot would undergo a multi-year, redesign and expansion plan that would introduce Guardians of Galaxy and attractions to Future World and World Showcase, respectively as well as maintaining the original vision and spirit for the park. Epcot is divided into two main themed areas, Future World and World Showcase. The World Showcase usually opens two hours after park opening and remains open later than the Future World section of the park. Most major attractions in Future World remain open until the park's closing time. A secondary park gate is located between the France and United Kingdom pavilions of World Showcase and is known as the International Gateway. The International Gateway is directly accessible to guests arriving from the nearby Epcot area resorts and Disney's Hollywood Studios. Future World consists of a variety of avant garde pavilions that explore innovative aspects and applications, including technology and science with each pavilion featuring self-contained attractions. Future World also serves as the park's main entrance and features the park's iconic landmark, Spaceship Earth, a large geodesic sphere structure which houses a themed attraction inside. Originally, Future World opened with five pavilions, with Imagination and Horizons pavilions opening the following year, and the Living Seas and Wonders of Life pavilions opening in 1986 and 1989, respectively. Additionally, each pavilion of Future World featured a unique circular logo which was featured on park signage and the attractions themselves. The pavilions are now instead identified by name and recognized by the main attractions housed inside. The logos, including that of Epcot itself, have been phased out over recent years, but some homages are still scattered throughout the park, including merchandising. World of Motion, Horizons, Wonders of Life, and Universe of Energy closed in 1996, 1999. 2007, and 2017, respectively. The current pavilions and attractions located in Future World include the following. Each pavilion was initially sponsored by a corporation which helped fund its construction and maintenance in return for the corporation's logos and some marketing elements appearing throughout the pavilion. For example, Universe of Energy was sponsored by Exxon from 1982 to 2004, and the land was sponsored by Kraft from 1982 to 1993 then Nestle from 1993 to 2009. Each pavilion contains a private VIP area for its sponsor with offices, lounges, and reception areas hidden away from regular park guests. While some pavilions still retain active sponsorships, in recent years several pavilions have low sponsorships due to lack of interest from partner companies in renewing expiring agreements. After General Electric left Horizons in 1993, it closed for a couple of years, then reopened temporarily while neighboring attractions Universe of Energy and World of Motion were renovated. MetLife sponsored Wonders of Life from 1989 to 2001, until that area was closed. Current active sponsorships include the following World Showcase is a large area reminiscent of a permanent World's Fair containing 11 pavilions, each themed and dedicated to represent a specific country. The pavilions surround the World Showcase Lagoon a large man-made lake located in the center of World Showcase with a perimeter of. In clockwise order, the 11 pavilions are 
Of the 11 pavilions, only Morocco and Norway were not present at the park's opening, as they were added in 1984 and 1988, respectively. Each pavilion contains themed architecture, landscapes, streetscapes, attractions, shops, and restaurants representing the respective country's culture and cuisine. In an effort to maintain the authenticity of the represented countries, the pavilions are primarily staffed by citizens of the respective countries as part of the cultural representative program through Q1 visa agreements. Some pavilions also contain themed rides, shows, and live entertainment representative of the respective country. The only pavilion that is directly sponsored by the government of its respective country is Morocco. The remaining pavilions are primarily sponsored by private companies with affiliations to the represented countries. Originally, the showcase was to include partnerships with the governments of the different countries. According to Disney's 1975 annual report, the showcase would Pavilions for Brazil, the Philippines Puerto Rico, Russia, Switzerland, Costa Rica, Spain, Venezuela, United Arab Emirates, and Israel have occasionally been rumored as potential future pavilions but have never made it past the planning phases to date. The Israeli, Spanish, and an equatorial Africa pavilion, blending elements of the cultures of countries such as Kenya and Zaire, were even announced as coming soon in 1982, but never took off. Instead, a small African themed refreshment shop known as the Outpost currently resides where equatorial Africa was to be. Israel, five African countries Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Namibia, and South Africa, as well as eight other countries Brazil, Chile, India, Indonesia, New Zealand. Saudi Arabia, Scotland, and Sweden, took part in the Millennium Village during the Millennium Celebration. There are currently eight undeveloped spots for countries around the world showcase, including the space occupied by the outpost, in between the locations off the current countries. Two of the potential locations, on either side of the United Kingdom, are currently occupied by World Showplace. Two more lie on either side of the American Adventure. Though this pavilion's use of reversed force perspective may preclude the construction of additional buildings as they would ruin the illusion. Unlike Magic Kingdom, which up until 2012 did not serve alcohol and now only serves it in all table service locations, most stores and restaurants at Epcot, especially in the World Showcase, serve and or sell a variety of alcoholic beverages including specialty drinks, craft beers, wines, and spirits reflective of their respective countries. The park also hosts the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival, an annual event featuring food and drink samplings from all over the world, along with live entertainment and special exhibits. Originally based on the Disney Channel animated series Kim Possible, the World Showcase Adventure is an interactive mobile attraction taking place in several pavilions throughout the World Showcase. The attraction is an electronic scavenger hunt that has guests using special communicators, in actuality, customized cell phones, to help teenage crime fighters Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable solve a crime or disrupt an evildoer's plans for global domination. The communicator is able to trigger specific events within the pavilion grounds that provide clues to completing the adventure. Launched in January 2009 and presented by Verizon Wireless, the adventure is included in park admission. It was succeeded by Agent P's World Showcase Adventure, based on Disney's Phineas and Ferb, on June 23, 2012. Illuminations, Reflections of Earth is an award-winning show taking place in the World Showcase Lagoon every night at the park's closing time, usually 9 p.m. It features fireworks, lasers, fire, and water fountains timed to a musical score over the World Showcase Lagoon. A large rotating globe with curved LED screens is the centerpiece of the show and is used to display images of people and places. The current version premiered as part of the park's Millennium Celebration in 2000. The show tells the story of Earth and is divided into three movements titled Chaos, Order, and Meaning. The music has an African tribal sound to it, to emphasize the idea of humanity as a single unified tribe on this planet. The lagoon is surrounded by 19 large torches signifying the first 19 centuries of the Common Era, and the show culminates in the globe opening like a lotus blossom to reveal a 20th torch, representing the now completed 20th century. Epcot hosts a number of special events during the year. The official album of Walt Disney World Epcot Center was the official album for Epcot Center in 1983. It was originally released on LP and audio cassette and is no longer being produced. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.